Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. As you can see, I am starting off with the we're gonna get ready on camera face. For today's video, I am going to be doing another look with the Wayne Gotts Pearl Palette, as well as give you my thoughts now that I've used it more. So if you wanna see that, then just keep watching. Hey guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. So this is not a first impressions. I have used this palette before. If you do want to see my first impressions on this palette, see the first look that I created, check out my most recent live. It is called the Wayne Goss Pearl Palette, testing it, and there's some other things that I did. It was during a live, but I did cover this, and I wasn't intending on doing another video on it because I feel like what I said in that original first impressions still rings true, but if you didn't know, I really, really love makeup. I love playing with makeup, and I wasn't intending on filming today. I wasn't intending on uploading today. This is a bonus video because I want to play with this palette again. I want to do another look take it a different direction. So we are gonna do that. So let me quickly get into the details of this palette. It is available on Beautylish. This is his third luxury eye palette that he has come out with, his third color story. They are $55, which is quite a lot of money. You get six shades and everything besides the color is the exact same as the previous palettes. You know, they are made in the USA. You have six shades and the packaging is the exact same. It's very easy to clean, very soft sleek and simple and I really really like this color story when I first saw it I thought that this is something that I would enjoy it's very soft Wayne almost describes it as his perfect bridal palette and I was very intrigued if you don't know I am a bridal makeup artist so this kind of color story is definitely in my wheelhouse so I was very excited to try it. I think Wayne has a very nice eyeshadow formula. I was a bit wary though because this one was a little bit difficult to work with. This is the Pearl Moonstone but I loved the color story of this. The first palette that he came out with which is Imperial Topaz. I thought the formulation on this was very very nice. Now these two I just want to show you the differences. You can see Imperial Topaz is much more warm and neutral. This definitely has those blushing bridal kind of tones to them um, and you can see that he listened to his customers and he decided not to go with a black in this palette because when he had originally come out with his brand he said that there was going to be a black in every palette but you know with six shades having a black in every palette was a bit much so I think it's really great that he listened to his customers and let's go over the actual formulations in here so you are getting four true mattes which are going to be these four right here one shimmer shade and then one, I call them pop shades, but what they're actually called from his line is the Celestial Glitters. I really, really love that. I really love these. I feel like he does a great job with these formulations here. His mattes are very nice for mature skin. They're not overly drying. They're nice and soft. If you don't know, he definitely targets mature skin for his products. So you can definitely trust that his products are going to look good with that type of skin in mind, which is always something to really appreciate. But I will say for the most part, his eyeshadows uh it's been kind of hit or miss with the first two and this one i really like i think the quality is very nice uh, one thing that i would have changed about this palette and this is a personal thing uh, i think for my style of makeup what i like and what i tend to use on my brides while i do really love that he added this gray tone here i personally feel like i am missing depth i know bridal looks are not too much about definition but i'm the queen of shadow liner and adding just a pop of depth like the tiniest little bit and I feel like that this palette does need some depth. I don't use too many gray tones but that is totally personal preference in my life. I had a few of you tell me that you really did like the gray addition and I think it does add some interest here but even when I built up the deeper shades in here it didn't give me that depth that I was wanting so I do wish that this palette had more depth and while I do like the gray being here if it was a deep 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 chocolate brown I think this would have been the ultimate bridal palette for how I tend to do makeup on my brides, but everybody's different and color story preference is very, very personal, but I did want to share that and I do think that it could use a bit more depth, but other than that, I think it's really pretty. I think the color choices are very nice. I'm gonna stop 
jabbering because I know how to do that way too well. And let's get to the application portion. I'm just using the concealer that I used today, the e.l.f. Camo Concealer, and I'm putting that all over my lid. These eyeshadows swatch really beautifully. In fact, they gave me much more pop and pigment than I was expecting, which I'm really happy about. It gave the perfect level of pigmentation where it wasn't too much, but it also wasn't sheer. I just thought it was the perfect level. Even the pinky blushy shade right here, it really popped in a way that surprised me. I thought it looked gorgeous. I love that there's a blushy tone in here. I think that's beautiful. I'm gonna take a, let's use Wayne Goss here. I'm gonna take his number six brush and we're gonna use the cream shade. Love that he has a cream shade in this palette. It's such a versatile shade. You can put the cream all over the eyelid with just another shade in the crease, which is gonna look really beautiful and wearable. For me, I'm gonna use it to set underneath the brow bone. Taking a look at his other two palettes, he does have another cream shade in the Imperial Topaz, but it is a shimmer shade. So that's a nice addition to the collection. In my original in first impressions of this, I used all six shades in the typical kind of fashion that I would use this palette. So I do recommend if you are truly interested into in-depth thoughts and how each color worked for me to check out that live. But today I really want to give this gray shadow a chance. I made it clear the grays in the Pearl Moonstone I found to be a little bit harder to work with, but I, I I think I really like the gray and the pearl because you can see the different bases here. The pearl moonstone, they're definitely more cool, almost more blue based, whereas the gray in this pearl palette is more neutral, has a little bit more warmth to it, which I think formulation wise, it's gonna make it easier to formulate, easier to work with. So I'm gonna continue to use this number six brush and I do want this gray shade to be the focal point. I don't think I'm gonna use every shade in this palette today. Like I said, I've already used all of them anyways and you can always check out that video if you want to see each shade in action but I really was curious as to how this gray shade would look wow okay it is blending out beautifully and this brush is amazing for packing that color down and then flipping it to the top side blending that shade out you know Wayne's line for the most part it's just about wearable tones that are easy to use easy to make sense of, easy to make a look with. And so this palette isn't going to be for everybody. If you have a sizable makeup collection, you very well probably do have shades similar to what you see here. But I think it's a really nice curation. I really do. I will say this is the most depth that you are going to get with this palette. It can't go any deeper unless you were to dig into another palette. And if you have his other palettes, you have nice big fat blacks. So... This gray is really nice. It's blending really beautifully. It's packing on really nice. I'm going to take a BK Beauty 201 brush and I did want to take just a little bit of this blush shade, which is absolutely beautiful. It's probably my favorite shade in this palette. It's perfectly neutral, but still gives a little bit of a pop. And you can see, I just wanted to pop out a little bit of the gray because I'm gonna use this as a blush towards the end of this video here. Just like that, just a little hint. Let me use the tip of this brush. We're gonna put this just in the outer third of the lower lash line. Taking a look at the palette, I want to play with the pink and gray tones. So I'm actually gonna go back into the blush shade. We're just gonna pull it more into this look. I'm gonna put this in to the first half of the eyelid and fill in that area. I think blush tones and gray tones are very, very flattering. So even though I just complained that I would have preferred a dark brown in place of the gray, this really does offer some inspiration for me because pink and gray are a beautiful color combo. <laughs> So am I really that mad about it? Nah. And then finally, I told you I'm not going to use every shade in today's video. I just wanted to show you a little bit of the palette more in action and the shades that I do feel like I needed some extra attention to. I'm going to go into the Celestial shade, which this is so beautiful. It does get a little bit hard pan, but the shadows do continue to work. And I'm going to put that right on top of the pink shade. Just like this, really stunning. And I don't have problems with fallout with these shades. I think if you are worried about fallout, definitely go in with a glitter glue. It's, it's an extra step, but it will help. But I don't notice too much fallout from his celestial shades to a point where I do feel like I need to put on a glitter glue. Just a touch right there, you can see it's really pretty. It's not a subtle glitter, it adds some glam 
to the eyelids to easily make it from a day palette to a night palette, but it's one of my favorite formulas from him. I totally forgot to do the inner lash line. Sorry, we're gonna do a refer number 12 brush. I'm just gonna brighten up my eye with this shade right here. Just to add a little bit of shimmer down here. Also to use another shade for you guys, this is a refer number 12 brush. I'm gonna show you what I did during my live that I really liked. I got a request to use this on the face, so we're gonna use the blush shade I'm using a blinged brush F14. Do you see how pretty this looks? As an actual blush on the cheek, and it's gonna pull that eye look together. So if you use the blush shade in your makeup look, I highly recommend using it as the blush as well because it really creates a cohesive look here. It's really pretty. So thank you to the subscriber who suggested that I do this because it's beautiful and you can see the shadow blends right into the cheek very nice, very easily. I am going to also use, for good measure, this shade right here as a highlight. It's not my favorite highlight to use, but if I you know, let's say I went somewhere and took this with me and I forgot a highlight. This is what I would use. It's workable. It doesn't create a shadow either and it does just create a little bit of glow as you turn your face. But again, I would rather dig into another highlight and he has great highlights in his line that I really enjoy. But it can be used. It is versatile enough for that. Put some in the inner corner as well for a little bit of a glow. It might look a little bit deep in the pan, but it actually does give off a little bit of brightness. All right, I'm gonna do my lashes, my lips, and all of that, and I will show you guys the final look. All right, you guys, here is the final look pulled together. I did wanna share what I used on my lips today because I did use the, oops. I did use the whole Wayne Goss kind of lip system here. So I used the lip pencil in Ma, and then I put the lipstick in Amaryllis over top. It's a bit more peachy than I wanted, but it's still a beautiful color. And then I used Petunia lip gloss. And yeah, here is the gorgeous just look. So I have to say, I think of the three palettes, this one is probably my favorite in terms of how often I think I'm going to use it. I absolutely love this blush shade in here. I think it is absolutely beautiful. Do I think this is a you must get this or your collection is going to be incomplete? No, I do think you probably do already have these shades, but they are beautiful. I think the quality in here was really, really nice. I really like the look. The one thing I will say though is I don't feel like there's a ton of versatility in this palette. A lot of the looks that I've seen have been kind of the same and I think adding some more depth could really have changed that because I do feel like a lot of the looks they just look very similar. This isn't a palette that you're going to be able to get a bajillion looks with but the looks that you will get will be really pretty very soft so I do like this. I would say in my opinion this one is one of the best in terms of color story and quality. So there we have it that was my final review on the Wayne Goss Pearl palette. Let me know your thoughts down below. If you guys aren't subscribed to my channel already I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so and I will see you guys in the next one bye guys have a good one